you a little background. Uh, I have worked for DPA for six years. I actually heard about DPA at an event that some of you might know called Winter Music Conference, which is uh, a big dance music week of parties that happens in Miami every year. Drug Policy Alliance was there around the time of the Rave Act to kind of talk to the community about the advocacy that they were doing to kind of push back against the Rave Act. For those who don't know, the Rave Act was legislation that was designed to kind of try and curb ecstasy use at raves. Um, our very own Bill Piper, who's the room host at the back of the room, was giving the presentation on behalf of Drug Policy Alliance, and I was like, wow, this is a great organization that I need to be involved with. I love what they're doing uh, on this topic. So I joined them, and uh, after they had finished the campaign against the Rave Act, which um, did actually pass, not, in, not as the Rave Act, it was given some kind of confusing name, Piper, do you remember the name of the legislation? Yeah, it's like it's illegal, illegal drug. <laughs> no, it's like the. Um, what was it called? They snuck it in with something else. They, they added it to the to Amber, Amber Alert. Alert. Oh. Right. They so did. they added it to Amber Alert, which was. That was a very good time. It was backdoor Congress stuff, but it passed, and so everybody thought that that would have like a chilling effect on the scene, and that you know raves would basically die out, which. Okay, so how many years later, and they are still happening all over the country. Nightlife is still happening in clubs, actually. It's actually, this is a completely unscientific and unresearched statement, but they seem to be bigger than ever. Um, I speak as a participant in the scene, so during the time I worked for DPA and after the Rave Act passed, I'm still going out, I'm still very much a part of the scene. To me, it seems like much, a much bigger thing. And I originally lived here in LA, which is where I was involved in um, the nightlife scene. And so recently, I was very um, excited to hear about some new activity that was happening in terms of nightlife harm reduction. So I have four excellent panelists who are gonna kind of give us um, an idea about where the topic of nightlife harm reduction is today after the Rave Act. Um, the thing that brought this back to my attention and said, we really need to have a panel about this at the conference, we need to have this conversation, was in June 2010 at an event here in Los Angeles called Electric Daisy Carnival. Very, very large event. There was a young woman, a 15-year-old girl, who died of ecstasy-involved um, causes. And so the typical response to something like that, and indeed, the kind of thing that happened many years ago when they brought forth the Rave Act was to kind of crack down and, you know, make more laws, close parties down, do that sort of thing. What happened in LA is a little bit, well, actually very different than that. And so we have um, Ben Lee from the LA Department of Public Health here to talk to you a little bit about what uh, the public, the Department of Public Health did as a result of the death that happened at this event. So, without further ado, I'm gonna let Ben give a presentation. 